Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Roy Francoli and author of Make Great Music with Beads. And this is week one, day two of our book review, actually book reading, I'm going to read from the book, book reading and review marathon. So in this video, um, I'm dividing it into three parts. First is a bit of introduction, that's right now, where I'll tell you just really briefly, quickly, a little bit about my book. And this project and then I'm going to read from the book for a little bit and um, hopefully you'll find that useful and inspiring maybe um, get you thinking a little bit and then I'm going to encourage you to just take five minutes to go to over to Amazon and leave a review of the book if you don't have a review copy and you would like your own personal PDF copy of the book I'm very happy to send it out in exchange for just a few words on Amazon. I cannot tell you how important each and every single review is to the success, the long-term success of this book. So I'd be very, very grateful for your support in that. So feel free to reach out if you want a free copy. I'm very happy to send it to you. The book is technically published, but I'm not really telling people about it except for in this group, people in my world, because the hard launch where I really go live and tell people the whole world about it on social media will be January 7th. Also, if you want to buy the book, that's the best day to buy it to help towards bestseller status. I would be really grateful for that. Um, but anyway, it is available now on January 7th, the ebook and the hardcover are coming out. That's the hard lunch. So I don't want to take much time talking about the book and the process, except what I just said. Um, I'm going to just read a bit now from the book. And then if you like it, you can, you can write me a review. I need reviews, lots and lots of reviews. I have a goal of a hundred or 150 reviews by the end of the month. So it's an ambitious goal, but I know you can help me get there. Okay. So I looked, um, I read from the first chapter on day one, which is being a musician, common desires and obstacles to success. And I think I'd like to read a little more from chapter one. Um, I'm going to read from page eight. It's called, Let's Talk About Pain. And actually, before I get into reading it, I want to just tell you that in the pages before, I'm talking, I'm sharing a story from a student of mine who, well, she's not my student anymore, but she's a professional in a high level orchestra in this country. And she never had performance anxiety until the pandemic hit, and then things got really shaky for her. So her story is in there. I'm not going to read that right now, um, but what comes after it is this. Let's talk about pain. Of course, it's not just professional musicians who struggle. Musicians of all skill levels can find themselves faced with a variety of problems that make it harder to feel good about themselves and enjoy their music. In fact, the problems musicians have to deal with usually take root much earlier in life. When I was on the faculty of a well-respected univers university music conservatory, I was surprised to come into contact with so many young students who were already contemplating quitting music and changing careers. Most of these kids were passionate about music, but when they got to the conservatory, they found that they were woefully unprepared to deal with the competitive pressure in that environment. And by the way, if you're listening um, and you're relating to anything I read, I would love it if you would share something in the comments um, to that effect and you know, send the emojis out and all that. It's really helpful for, um, for Facebook to promote the video so more people see it. So, and I love to respond to your feedback, by the way. So I'd love to get, you know, to hear if this resonates with you. I mean, I know a lot of people I've worked with, <laughs> this, this resonates because they also had difficulty when they went to school and they felt unprepared for the competitiveness. So I'd love to hear your story too, if you have one. Moving on. In their private Alexander Technique lessons, these are the students I was working with at the university in the conservatory. In their private Alexander Technique lessons with me, they confided in me that the tension was palpable every time they walked through the halls, but they didn't have the knowledge or the skills to take care of themselves and stay balanced and healthy in mind, body, and spirit. 
These typical college music students came to me regularly with physical problems such as tendonitis, back pain, shoulder and neck pain, mental problems such as difficulty concentrating and organizing their time, emotional problems such as performance anxiety and depression, and because they were unable to relax while playing, technical problems with their instruments they couldn't get past. Many of my students suffered from a general sense of overwhelm. None were lazy. In fact, they were typically good students who chose to take my class because they cared dearly about succeeding in life and music. Of course, applied instrument teachers have job descriptions that don't go beyond teaching the musical skills required for students to excel at their instruments. Most music teachers aren't professionally trained to help kids with a physical, and emotional issues they face daily. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon for music teachers themselves to unwittingly, or in rare cases, maliciously, I hate to say, contribute to their own students' problems by demanding that they practice unreasonably long hours, berating them when they make mistakes or their progress seems too slow, looming over their shoulders during rehearsals, yelling or threatening them with poor grades and predicting career failure if they don't work harder. This may say, sound extreme, by the way, but I literally heard all of these things from students of mine. I'm not making any of it up, sadly. After I left the university and began working with amateurs, aspiring professionals, and career musicians from around the world, I discovered just how common what my university students were experiencing is and how many people have given up on their musical dreams or settled for less than what's truly possible because of it. The problems I've described are actually very common no matter the artist's skill level and are not at all unique to the institution where I was teaching. I wanna make that very clear actually, this is not about the place I was teaching, that just happens to be where I was, but I know for a fact that these things happen in places all over the world, unfortunately. Um, okay, here we are. When musicians come to me for coaching, I very quickly put them at ease. Through a carefully designed step-by-step -step process, I help them draw the connection between their mental outlook, emotions, physical sensations and movements on the one hand, and their artistry. Fortunately, these musicians quickly come to recognize that they need a more holistic, expansive, and balanced approach to their daily life and their music making. When they come to me, they're curious, ready to learn, and willing to take full responsibility for their experience. This allows them to practice what I teach so they can experience a shift in perspective and a transformation in how they feel and play, often within days or weeks. I'm not exaggerating. Sometimes it's really fast. <laughs> Always amazes me. After we had just a few sessions together, my university students were able to start changing unhelpful habits. They began to truly enjoy their college experience and look forward to thriving in one of the best professions in the world, music making. I'm just going to read a little more from this same chapter. Again, this is chapter one, if you're just joining us, from Make Great Music with Ease, The Secret to Smarter Practice, Confident Performance and Living a Happier Life. So, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep reading. This is, this is a little bit about myself here. Musicians all want to enjoy making the best music possible. That's the next section. We musicians, all have two major things in common. We want to feel good and play better. Whether that means giving a stellar performance for thousands at Carnegie Hall or joyfully playing our heart out alone in a practice room. I grew up in a musical family. My mother was a Suzuki Method cello teacher and my dad is an amateur violist, violinist and trombonist. Both of my parents are now retired and they've taken to playing multiple instruments in community ensembles, which they sure thoroughly enjoy. I often call them at home and they are not there because they're at a rehearsal or a concert or something. It's really nice. My parents have always been passionate about music 
but they've had their share of struggles like everyone else. For my mother, debilitating shoulder pain forced her to switch from the cello to the clarinet in her retirement. While back pain and multiple surgeries have at times made long rehearsals and certain techniques difficult for my father to navigate. Despite my own occasional physical pain when playing the violin, which I go into later in the book, my main struggle as a young performer was frustration at my technical limitations. Every night, I would listen to recordings of the great violinists like Nathan Milstein, who later became my teacher for five summers, or Michael Rabin. Play my they played my favorite pieces as I fell asleep, but my own playing always fell short to the point that I could hardly bear listening to a recording of myself. Have you ever been an audience member at a concert when all you could do was stare in awe at the performer with your jaw dropped, asking yourself, but how do they make it look so easy? Because you know from much practice and personal experience how incredibly hard it is to do what they're doing. It can be maddening when you see Itzhak Perlman or a random eight-year-old on YouTube play with seemingly no limitations, and yet you ask yourself perplexed, why can I not play the music I love with relaxed abandon, confidence, effortless ease? Will I ever? I routinely practiced every day for hours, but even though I played at a very high level when young, my progress, my progress was never as swift and my technique was far from being as satisfying as I wished. Certain pieces and flashy techniques I seemed unable to play. And I had a feeling that somehow, no matter how long I practiced over any number of years, never would I be able to conquer them. I could have consented to that, but I didn't really, which is one reason why around the age of 19, I ended up drifting away from my solo violin career for decades. Thankfully, today is different. Though many pieces I still can't play, I have a deep, full-bodied understanding of what is interfering with my performing the most challenging passages. Now I know exactly what steps to take to master those pieces if I really wanted to. A process vastly different from what I thought it was when I was a teenager, which to me then basically meant a lot of detailed woodshedding, that is, practicing and practicing till a piece was perfect. I rarely experience pain or performance anxiety these days, now, and if I do, I know how to turn it around quickly so that both I and my music improve as a result. I now understand how my old mindset, for instance, worrying about what others thought of me and how they might judge my performance, caused excess muscular tension, and that mind-body combination multiplied the difficulties in my playing and my whole life making everything harder, more difficult. And I've learned how to undo that tension consistently and reliably whenever I want to get amazing results that make me happy. I want to teach that to you in this book. So that's our reading portion of this reading and review marathon. And before you go away, please, Say hello and hit the emoji or you know, tell me where you're from. Say some, put something in the comments. Um, I know that there are people here and I'm very happy that you're here. I would just love to interact if, if you're up for that. And I want to encourage you to please take just a couple minutes right now and use the link at the top of this post that will take you directly to Amazon. Actually, you have to be logged in first to be able to leave a review, but if you're enjoying what I'm reading, if you have been reading a free copy, or maybe you even bought the paperback, if you've been reading any of this book and you're enjoying it, I would be so grateful if you would just take a few minutes right now and go to the link, that log in, then go to the link at the top of this post and just give me a five-star review if you like it and leave a few words of, um, of, re of review. Um, honest, obviously, honest review and um, with integrity. <laughs> I'm not asking for people to lie about it, um, but it really is very, very important to the success 
of this book, Long Range, and I do want many, many people to benefit from what's in here. It's been my experience over decades of teaching this, the Alexander Technique, and exclusively hands-free since 2018 when I started teaching Primal Alexander, which is all about how you think and how that influences how you feel in your body and how you move to be able to move with ease, flexibility, and lots of creative spirit. It's been my experience that the techniques that I've been sharing really, really work, and I want more people to know about it. So there's a lot of thing, there's a lot in here that's practically useful that you can apply right away. There's also um, a lot of background um, about why things aren't working for people, why people get pain, emotional discomfort, performance anxiety. So uh, the whole first part of this book is about the challenges musicians have. The second part of the book is my own personal journey as a musician and then finding the Alexander Technique and then teaching it. And then part three is all very practical. That's where you actually get to learn about how this works. And then because it's hard to learn very practical things from a book, there's also a free video training that comes with the book. And that is very, very valuable. So you want to make sure you, you get the free video training and tons of bonus materials that come with the book also, also for free, like a practice success worksheet. There's um, a PDF on performance anxiety and how to deal with it. Um, just tons of stuff. So if you like it, go over to Amazon and leave a review and please do it soon. I have a goal of 100 to 150 reviews by the end of this month. The hard launch is January 7th. And if we have tons of reviews by then, then Amazon starts to promote it. And then lots and lots of people can find out about it. Um, just organically through Amazon. And that's what I'm aiming for because Amazon is huge, as you know, and I forget the number, but there are like thousands of books released every single day. So if the promotion isn't happening, the book just dies. And I don't want that to happen because I spent years on this and ugh, many, many, many hours and angst. And it really means a lot to me. So if you can help me in that small way to just hop over there to Amazon and post your review. I'll be very grateful. So this is day two of this month long uh, book reading and review challenge. Not challenge, well, it's a challenge for me, but it's kind of a marathon. And I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you enjoy the little snippets that I'm reading. Um, again, I really, really appreciate any feedback that you have for me in the form of comments or emojis here on the video. Um, and let me know if, if you like this and I'm going to keep doing it. So thanks so much for being here. I don't see any comments. Maybe they're just not showing up on my phone, but I'll check over there. I'm going to go onto my laptop now. And if there are comments, I will absolutely respond to them there. And again, let me know if you don't have a free PDF review copy. And if you'd like one, I will send you the whole book for free in exchange for that little review on Amazon. So that's really important for me these days. And I'm very, very grateful, extremely grateful to the people who've already done it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> All right. Take care. And I will be back in, in a few more days to read a little more. All right. Take care. Bye. Lots of love.